All right, welcome back to the Sportsman Analytics Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I am Dr. Deepak Chona. You can call me Pac. Week one just happened. This is Sunday night, so we don't have a lot of information yet, but we are going to give you what we got. Starting with Keenan Allen. A hamstring put him out of this game. Average timeline for a hamstring for a wide receiver takes about three weeks. Tend to vary about one week on either side of that, depending a little on severity. He'll probably get an MRI tomorrow, and then we'll have a little more information to work with. The good news is that receivers return nearly to full form right away, about 90%. The bad news is that, is that there is a real recurrence risk, about 20% to watch out for in the early weeks back. T. Higgins up next. Average concussion timeline, 7 to 10 days, depending on severity. When they come back, wide receivers don't tend to see a dip in performance, and there's not a particularly high recurrence rate here. In the meantime, though, if he does miss about one game, we would be looking at Tyler Boyd as an upgrade in potential DFS value. Next up, Najee Harris. The video looked really bad, but reportedly just a minor injury. Sounds like he won't be missing game time, but we don't know a lot quite yet, so we'll keep you posted on that as it comes out. Next up, Mac Jones, and in typical Bill Belichick fashion, he did not give us a lot to work with here. However, we do know that he had negative x-rays on his back, and that usually means the most common issue here is a muscle strain or a ligament sprain. In either case, most of these can be played through. So we're not expecting Mac Jones to miss a lot of time. Again, don't have a lot of info there. Next up, TJ Watt. Reports suggest that he ruptured his pec tendon. It's a diagnosis you can usually just pick up on a physical exam by feeling and looking alone. So even without an MRI, it's probably already accurate. They will confirm it with an MRI and then he'll probably have surgery. That usually takes three to four months to get back. But J.J. Watt actually came back in 10 weeks from a very similar injury. So I would expect T.J. Watt to be on a similar protocol to his brother, probably be back around December. In the short term, he's not likely to be the all-world defensive player that we saw even today. But in the long term, he should be just fine. Next up, James Robinson. Now, this is a positive outlier, something we love to see in the injury world. The early return from Achilles tendons ruptures is uh, the case in the case of James Robinson at eight months doesn't really carry a high re-injury risk the real limitation is usually more so explosiveness and production coming back and you're seeing that probably happening with Cam Akers being benched for Daryl Henderson so I think we're pretty safe to put James Robinson back into lineup starting next week as a flex worthy player Next up, J.K. Dobbins. As expected, no action today. We also learned we can't really trust what J.K. Dobbins is saying. He really wants to be out there. He's a young guy, and he's hungry to prove himself. So I love to see that. But again, not really going to be taking J.K. Dobbins' word for whether he's going to be playing or not going forward. Now, I would expect to see him starting around week three or so on a limited snap count. By mid-season, not necessarily factoring in the Ravens' running issues, you're probably looking at a very solid player. Now, again, the Sportsman Analytics data base is combined with machine learning and historical injury impacts and then player demographics. And all of that taken together produces an algorithm that projects 85% of J.K. Dobbins' peak explosiveness returning mid-season this year. To refresh yourself, it's been a while since you saw him, but last time he was on the field, he was averaging six yards per carry. So again, J.K. Dobbins could be a very solid player mid-season and onwards, but they're probably not going to be letting him run without snap counts until about week six at least. So keep an eye on this one as things develop over the next few weeks. And that is all for today. Again, this is Sunday night. And we will be updating as information comes out this week and beyond. So tune in, hit us up on social media, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and uh, Instagram, and we will get in touch.